This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Potentially Hazardous Near Earth Asteroid DX1110 and an influx of asteroids in the Ides of March. Let's march on, people. Now, with great effort, I strive to walk the line between science and religion, or super pro sad groupies and the doomers. I concentrate on being funny, smart, and entertaining while giving you the facts and trying to sensationalize them as little as possible. But I always get hit from both sides. You know what? I don't give a crap. Anyway, this is 2014 Thor, and Thor don't give a crap. So, we are going to do a rundown. We are probably not going to be that cool animation graphic intensive because I've got a lot of data to pump in this one in a short period of time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about Asteroid 2014 DX11. Zero. It is going to be coming in between the Earth and the Moon. Now that's close. Granted, they guarantee us it's not going to hit Earth, but who knows? We might get hit by another asteroid coming from the Sun, like happened on DA14. They're saying that 2014 DX110 is only 19 meters to 43 meters estimated in diameter. But I also want to talk about the influx of asteroids that will be coming in from March 5th to March 12th. Now, from March 5th to March 12th, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. That's eighteen near Earth asteroids in seven days. That's eighteen near Earth asteroids in one week. Granted, 2014 DX110 is the closest of them all, but remember, they only found this three days before its close approach. Now, some of these are gigantic, and 12 of those are bigger than 100 meters. 900 meters, 520 meters, 780 meters, 2.4 kilometers. That baby's huge. Man, crazy, huh? The largest being 2,000 EE14 at 2.4 kilometers. Though that is 64 lunar distances away. Nothing really to worry about on that. What we do worry about is the smaller stuff they can't see until it gets close. So it does look like we have an uptick of influx of near-Earth asteroids. I ain't saying doom after Comet Ison. I kind of figure that space doom will never come. Though if it comes, I'll be wrong again, I guess. Another thing I want to point out, that out of all these asteroids, eight of them were found in 2014. Meaning eight of them were found pretty much in the last two months. So those are pretty, some pretty interesting numbers. I would say scary, but I'm not about the doom. And I'm not here to make you fear anything. I'm just looking at them. And another thing I want to point out is when they talk about the uh, asteroid belt, how they're all kind of like in the asteroid belt, it seems like half of these don't even make it to the asteroid belt. Or half of them are in between Earth and Mars. Some are almost on a copycat orbit. Crazy stuff, people. And seeing as how eight of the 18 found have been found in the last two months, that's 44% of all these near-Earth asteroids, potentially hazardous asteroids, being found in the last 60 days. That's kind of creepy scary, right? Like if you're looking for doom essence. Well, it's right there, man. Or woman. Or people. Or aliens. Or reptiles. There you go. We got an influx of asteroids. Alright, thanks to my fancy smartphone calculator. I know that 18 near-Earth asteroids in 7 days is 2.57 a day. That's quite a bit. That is definitely an uptick. If you'll notice, DX1110 has an orbit somewhere between Mars's orbit and Ceres Vesta's orbit. We get a lot of asteroids that choose their two orbital points from somewhere in the inner solar system in what, what seems like Ceres, the planet, planet, planetoid that's filled with tons of mystery. We got 2014 DP21 coming in. Then we got Dope 7. That's one of my favorites. You'll notice it barely extends out into the asteroid belt. Then we got 2000 EE14. That one doesn't even come anywhere close to the asteroid belt. It shares its orbit with Earth's orbit and Mercury's orbit. Then we got DH. Then we got Dickhead 10. And when I say Dickhead, I just mean like private dick, you know? I'm not being rude or crass or nothing. It barely extends out into the asteroid belt again. It shares its orbit with Earth, pretty much. And then we have DJ80 bringing the fat beats, which is pretty much in like a stalker orbit with Earth, almost on our exact frame. Then you got CP13, which once again is kind of sticking out into that Ceres Vesta range and sharing its orbit with Earth. 
Auction House 33. Once again, sharing an orbit point with Earth and what looks like the Ceres Vesta region. And then we got 2013 Year 2. Shares pretty much its orbit with Earth and kind of Mars. And then we got 2005 Eeyore 95. Once again, kind of sharing its orbital points between Earth and Venus and Mars. Never making it to the asteroid belt. Once again, Eeyore 1, 6, 9. Sharing its orbital points with Earth, about a fourth of its orbit, and Mars. Never really making it into the asteroid belt. Then we got DA-53. Hey, why does DA sound so familiar? Oh yeah. Shares its orbit with Earth and Venus. Never making it into the asteroid belt. Then we got See You Later 13. We got a pretty far orbit. Extends out there to uh, about the Ceres Vesta range. And we got RS-11. Pretty much just goes back and forth between Mars and Earth. Mars and Earth. Never making it into the asteroid belt. Then we got 2012 RJ-15. Once again, sharing its orbit points with Earth and in between Earth and Venus. Once again, never making it actually out into the asteroid belt. Which is weird because they always imply that like, oh yeah, all these asteroids come from the asteroid belt. When it seems like, wow, a lot of them just happen to never even venture out there. Then we got Disc Jockey 23. You can choose Michael Jordan or Miley Cyrus, however you want, you know. Disc Jockey 23 does happen to come out. It goes all the way out to Jupiter pretty much. And we just found her. Sweet. Then you got 2002 C's, which never really makes it out in the asteroid belt. Shares its orbital points with Venus and Mars. And then you got 2001 SQ3, sharing its orbital points with Earth and just in front of Mars. Like I've been saying, a lot of these don't necessarily come anywhere close to the asteroid belt. So, you know, I'm definitely in the camp that asteroid sightings, findings are way up. Once again, that you know, people would be like, hey, it's technology. They didn't have technology back in 2013. But man, you know, when you're finding all these asteroids within the first two months, it seems like something is going on. And you know, the sun is flying through space like a, someone shot an arrow. So it's hard for me to imagine that all these asteroids are always going to keep their exact same orbit. Because not only are they orbiting around the inner solar system, but they are flying through space. So the orbits have to change a little. And... Don't these space rocks ever bump into other space rocks? Which bump into other space rocks? So you got some like pinball thing going on? Apparently not, I guess. Hell, what do I know? I just have a YouTube channel. I don't have science in my face. I'm gonna get a science tattoo in my heart. Yes, indeed. Anyway, so that's it. We're just taking a look at these, you know? Um, maybe stand outside and look for some meteors, meteorites, fireballs, shooting stars. Make some good wishes. And, uh, We'll just keep tracking this stuff, man. You know? I mean, NASA did put a Grand Asteroid Challenge asking anybody from kindergartners to senior citizens to help with them. Help find, track asteroids. So, that's what's just so weird. Where I try and help and get asteroid awareness elevated. Get people interested by being funny and stuff. And then, like, the Super Pro Psy guys are like, we hate you, you're a doomer, shut up. Only we are allowed to talk about astronomy. And to them, they can kiss my crap, man. I will put it in a hot dog bun. Well, I'll pay somebody to do it. Seems pretty gross. Take a turd, put it in a hot dog bun, you know? But I'm just saying, like, man, my purpose is good, you know? I'm not telling anybody they're gonna die or it's all gonna kill us. But I am agreeing with NASA and Pro Psy that this could be a serious potential problem. Something is changing. Would you say that the orbits of the planets in our solar system are getting tighter or wider? You know, like, it's not going to stay perfectly as it is forever. Things change. Change is the one constant in the universe, man. And I'm just here to, you know, help and do my job. Anyway, so that's it. We got one asteroid zipping by between Earth and the Moon, which I was kind of exciting. Then we got a crap ton of asteroids zipping by between the 5th and the 12th. 18 and 7 days. 